one of our regular contributors, Francis Jackson. Francis Jackson is a best-selling author as well as a attorney who specializes in disability law, disability disability law for those seeking veterans disability benefits as well as social security disability benefits. He's also a founding partner at Jackson McNichol. He's been featured on CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox networks across the country. He most recently appeared as the guest of Ben Glass on the Consumer Advocate Show discussing benefits for veterans and social security disability benefits and how his practice allows him to make the difference in the lives of people facing these disabilities. He's also been quoted in USA Today and is listed in Cambridge Who's Who. Mr. Jackson was honored by the National Academy of Best-Selling Authors with a Quilly Award in September of 2012 for his contribution to the best-selling book, Protect and Defend, where he wrote about protecting one's rights to veterans' disability compensation. Francis Jackson, welcome back to Money for Lunch. Bert, it's always a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what, and uh, I'm glad to have you on the show. Here it is, Fourth of July weekend, and I, I can't think of a better time to be thinking about the brave men and women who serve our country, who have given, you know, literally given a very special part uh, of themselves to our country. They're, they're now disabled. Uh, so, so today, I think today's show more than any other time is going to be a very special show. I, it's always uh, good to be able to talk with you about vets. Yep, yep. All right, so let's talk about this uh, again. As I mentioned, it's July fourth, and we're celebrating our historic breakaway from Great Britain. Can you tell us anything about the history of veterans' benefits? Well, actually, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, Bert. Uh, veterans' benefits in this country go. Uh, actually, all the way back to uh, the Plymouth of Pilgrims, uh, sorry, the Pilgrims of Plymouth when they uh, formed the, Pil the Plymouth Colony, um, and they passed a law uh, saying that the colony would support um, soldiers who became disabled in the uh, in the Indian Wars. Um, and you know, we've we've gone forward since then. Um, in 1776, the Continental Congress. Um, encouraged enlistments in the uh, army, the Continental Army, for the Revolution by promising veterans or future veterans uh, all kinds of things, land grants, uh, hospital care, and so on. So uh, we have a long history of uh, of promising those kinds of things. That's amazing to me that it goes back that far. That just blows me away. That back then, in you know the the colonial times, I mean, this is, emo, I would say, probably pre-colonial, but, I mean, in the time of the pilgrim settling, that they were already thinking benefits for veterans. That's just, did that surprise you when you found that out? It, it did, Bert, and, and it surprised me in particular because um, the British, uh, who, as you know, the colonies broke off from and, and modeled a lot of their approaches on, uh, did not have any... Uh, good system for taking care of disabled veterans. Uh, most of them ended up uh, as beggars, frankly. Um, so it's. It, I was pleased to see that uh, we were a little more progressive. <laughs> yes, it, you know, and, and, and uh, again, I'll, I'll give a little bit of props there to, to uh, England, uh, since uh, so many of our colonists, including the Pilgrims, came from England, and they must have said, hey, these guys did a really bad job. Let's not do that. Let's not follow their uh, their system of uh, of not taking care of our vets. Let's do something better. Uh, so so uh, I'm glad that they did. All right, let's talk about this. Where are there any of these political issues that we have seen recently back in those earlier times? Did you ever did you discover uncover any of these? I, I did, Bert. Sadly enough, there were. Um, you know the. Uh, the Continental Congress uh, and and the uh, the Army, uh, as I said, promised veterans uh, benefits if they uh, served in the in the uh, Revolutionary War. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as politicians will, um, when the war was over, they weren't so good about coming through with their promises, and they ended up um, not delivering on a lot of the promises. For example. Uh, one of the things that 
we would probably find quite shocking now, um, slaves who were freed to participate as soldiers in the Revolutionary War uh, were excluded from pension benefits on the theory that they'd gotten their freedom and that ought to be enough. They shouldn't get money on top of that. Um, so it's just one of wow. those historical black um, Yeah. And yeah, how others, would you like that? I'm I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that blows me away. But at the same time, you're right; it doesn't surprise me. Anyway, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that there there were other problems. Uh, a lot of the states failed to come through with with their share of the money to pay for uh, the grants for uh, for servicemen. And uh, uh, when the when the Congress issued the the chits, if you will, uh, to the uh, to the soldiers, many of them ended up selling them to speculators who bought them for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar um, because they could afford to wait until the, there was actually some value to them. And it, it's it's really kind of a, a sad chapter. It's, it's sort of the same thing that we've been seeing now where Congress promises all kinds of benefits, but the reality is that it's hard to get through the maze and get to those benefits. Yeah, it, it, uh, it really makes it clear that um, even though Congress had good intention, or our government at, at that time had, had good intentions, that um, yeah, things didn't get done. People backslide. They, you know, things change, um, and, and so you you start to see, even again uh, through history, that. Uh, not only did our veterans have to put up with a bunch of crap, but uh, that, uh, unfortunately, our government has not always been their best at keeping their word. Let me ask you this. So why would a modern veteran need help with his or her claim for benefits? Haven't all those issues been resolved now? Well, Bert, in, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. I mean, the the answer is that certainly the the basic rules that require that pensions be in place and be paid if you're proven eligible, uh, that, that part's been now solved. Uh, there, there's no longer an exclusion if you're, if you're black and came from a slave background many years ago or anything else. But what, what, uh, what is in place now is a very complicated bureaucratic system. And, you know, when we were on last, we talked some about uh, the – bureaucratic complications that had come up in the healthcare care system. Um, and it, while they're not the same in the disability side of the system, there are similar complications. Um, it's just very difficult for veterans to kind of get through the process. Um, the VA has been very resistive to uh, having veterans, for example, have lawyers to help them. Uh, it wasn't until 1988 that Congress passed a law allowing any judicial review of veterans' benefit decisions, uh, and it wasn't until 2006 that they allowed people to hire an attorney um, after the initial denial. In, in the original legislation, a person had to be denied at the regional office, had to then appeal to the Board of Veterans' Appeals, be denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, and then they had a, a one-year window in which they could hire an attorney. Now it's been liberalized in the 2006 legislation so that once you get turned down, you can go ahead and hire an attorney. But even now, you can't hire an attorney um, to help you formulate your claim in the beginning, which is one of the reasons why so many initial claims get turned down. But beyond that... There's a very interesting study in 2005. Um, the VA did a study of people who were represented and people who weren't and concluded that benefits on the average were 144% higher for people who were represented. And I think that gives you some sense of just how difficult it is for an average person to work their way through this system that they don't know anything about without any legal training. Yes. You know what? What's what's uh, shameful here, too, is that uh, it took so long for Congress to allow help. You know, it, it just amazes that, uh, that um, you know, Francis, that many vets 
were denied benefits, were not allowed to seek the, the help of an attorney, and were completely lost. I mean, they, they sacrificed for our country, and when it's all said and done, they got nothing. And, and that's, that's certainly true. That, that, yeah, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to, to hear that because, again, you know, these are probably the best of our best. Uh, you know, uh, I've met so many good, both men and women, who take so much pride in serving our country. And, you know, they, they just love being in the armed forces. They truly do. And then, and then you hear how tough it is for these guys to get their promises and their benefits. And it's ridiculous. And, and any speculation as to why it took so long to get for Congress to to allow these guys to get help? Is it just the slowness of the political machine? Is that all it was? What is your take? Well, it's a, it was a combination of factors, I think, Bert, but, but probably um, the one factor that is always there in the political equation is money. Uh, as I said, um, the VA's own study from 19, uh, sorry, from 2005 shows that when people are represented, they're likely to get more benefits, greater benefits. So uh, I think the VA understood correctly that if people were not represented, they had a better chance of unfairly denying benefits and making it stick. And I, I think it's, frankly, as crass as that, although certainly you'd never get anybody to admit to that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so right now as it stands, if I'm a veteran – and I'm confused or, or I'm overwhelmed by applying for veterans' benefits, I cannot retain an attorney. Not at the outset, Bert. Um, you, you can get some help. There is some free help from uh, some of the veteran service organizations, uh, gotcha. American Legion, VFW, and so on. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you can appreciate, um, those folks are pretty much overwhelmed. They have very large caseloads, and... They can't really um, spend a lot of time on any individual case, but, but they, they can at least help a veteran get the claim in the works. Um, then once the claim has been acted on, the um, veteran is at the point where they can hire an attorney. This is a very interesting comment. Um, the American Legion came out with, uh, with some statistics recently. You and I have talked about the fact that under Shinseki, they've been trying to push some of the, the initial claims faster. Uh, the American right. Legion says that as a result of them trying to push them faster, while they've done that, um, while they've moved them faster, the error rate has crept up to what they claim is 55%, uh, which is <laughs> enormous <laughs> and appreciate. So uh, the net result is that the, the number of appeals that are pending, um, which they have not focused on, has grown pretty dramatically. So um, those are the folks who um, can get the help of an attorney and usually need it, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, what blows me away is the figure that you gave on uh, uh, that, that uh, veterans who get the help of an attorney after, after, the, after they've been first uh, denied, that uh, on average recover... 144% more benefits than without an attorney. That just staggers the mind. That is pretty amazing, but that is, in fact, the uh, the VA's own number from their 2005 study. That's amazing. You know what, and, and again, it just goes to show you that, that the system is obviously very complicated, and it and it's, uh, has a lot of pitfalls. And now with this error rate creeping up, you can see why it becomes very overwhelmed, overwhelming for veterans and their families to get disability benefits going. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just terrible. I mean, I just, I just, uh, uh, I've said this before. I just love the fact that uh, that Francis, that Jackson McNichol is there to help these guys out because they just need the help, and that's all there is to it. And so I'm grateful that you guys, you know, have uh, found this niche to help veterans and other people with their disability questions. And, guys, if you have disability questions, if you have, um, you know, if, if you think you're being mistreated, uh, you're not, you're getting denied unfairly, check out Jackson-McNichol, M-A-C, 
N I C H O L dot com, Jackson dash McNichol dot com, and see if they can help you with your disability questions, your veterans' disability questions. These are the guys that uh, have helped so many people, just like yourself. So don't wait any longer. Do not suffer in silence, as I always like to say. Francis Jackson, we're out of time. Great stuff, as always, and I want to wish you and everybody else a happy Fourth of July. I appreciate that, Bert. Uh, enjoy the Fourth yourself. All righty. Guys, we're off and running. Great stuff there by regular contributor Francis Jackson. And again, if you are suffering, if you need help with your disability benefits, check this guy out, Francis Jackson, at Jackson-McNichol. 